Welcome to the Millstart Mike channel. I want to talk about something that's been on my mind for a little while and I kind of want to get it off my chest. So I'm going to use my little pulpit here. One of the great things about my wife is that when it comes to gift giving, uh, she makes it pretty easy on me. Uh, she's happy with a couple of massage gift certificates for her birthday, Christmas, Valentine's Day, etc. And she's happy just basically for my birthday every year she renews my NRA membership. Um, when it comes to grand groups, I support monetarily. I'm currently a member of the NRA, the Kansas State Rifle Association, uh, the Grand Collectors Association, and several gun channels I support on Patreon. If you want to see what they are, uh, hit my Patreon page up and you can see who I support. Uh, after the last year though, I'm considering leaving the NRA at worst and at best I'm basically giving them a one year probation to kind of get their stuff together. Now, first of all, there are many positives to the NRA. Um, the Eddie the Eagle program is second to none. I mean, that's great for teaching young children about gun safety, and even anti-gunners shouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, second, their political muscle is the big reason that uh, during the Obama administration, uh, no gun control legislation made it out of Congress, no matter how hard he tried. So i got to give them props there. And finally, kind of related to the second point, uh, when it comes to political muscle for the Second Amendment, they are the 800-pound gorilla in their room. That said, the NRA has done some things in the past year that uh, not only do not represent us in the gun culture, but it looks very hypocritical for the group who says uh, they fight the enemies of freedom. By this I mean that while I'm not asking for advocacy on behalf of the other Bill of Right amendments, um, the NRA needs to make sure that they're not supporting policies and people who would take away rights from the other Bill of Rights. Um, first, uh, during the election year last year, Donald Trump and the NRA both supported a version of No Fly, No Buy. Uh, basically, your name can be added to a secret, a secret FBI list or terror list that um, they basically agreed that they wanted it to, those names to be added to the Knicks uh, reject list. Um, the NRA version kind of agreed with this, but it called for a quick appeals process. There are so many things wrong with this policy. First of all, these lists are secret, and there's no real criteria to on how to add people to these lists. And you don't know how you got on, and it takes a long time for you to get off. Um, also, there's many, many mistakes on these lists. I mean, if you're unfortunate enough to have the same name as somebody who uh, they want to keep an eye on, you know, you're not able to you know, freely travel. Uh, your rights should not be taken away from you only due to suspicion. Um, you, know, you need to have a, you know, taken to trial and convicted of a crime before you've had rights taken away from you. I mean, our legal system was founded on the premise of innocent to proven guilty and you should not lose any rights unless you've been convicted of a crime in a court of law. I mean, even the NRA version violates the second, fourth, fifth, and sixth amendments. Um, it's kind of bad that even the ACLU seen this in their disagreement with the policy. Second, and this is the big one that I've, this is the big problem I've had with the NRA in the last year and it really makes them look hypocritical is their loud and continued endorsement of Jeff Sessions. Um, I get that he's generally supportive and acts in our favor when it comes to the Second Amendment, but he is the Dianne Feinstein of the Fourth Amendment. Sessions has expressed support for civil asset forfeiture without conviction, which basically gives the police carte blanche to rob you of your, your money and your possessions on a stop uh, if they feel that you might you know, they think that you might be doing something uh, nefarious with it. Um, and this, you know, usually disproportionately affects people who have, uh, you know, more melanin in their skin than I do. Um, of course, it costs you, usually to get your stuff back, it costs you more in court uh, than the stuff that they take is worth. And the money and items the police take, they get to add to their coffers. Um, Sessions is also a rabid supporter of the Patriot Act, 
which does everything from creating a spying apparatus that the government in the book 1984 could only dream of, and it also gives the government permission to basically molest you if you want to fly anywhere in this country. Um, the Fourth Amendment is one of our most important freedoms, and supporting Sessions is not fighting the enemies of freedom. Um, I would go as far to say that he might be an enemy of freedom. Now, I wrote NRA board member Todd Rathner about my concerns. I heard that he's really good about responding, and that's why I, tr that's why I uh, chose him. Sure enough, he responded to me. Uh, he seems like a good enough guy. He said that he himself uh, hates the Patriot Act, but the NRA only looks at Second Amendment issues when uh, endorsing someone or looking at other 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 issues that and um, he think or when endorsing someone and looking at policies and he says that looking at other issues can dilute the NRA's message. I have to respectfully disagree. The NR the Second Amendment was written to keep a tyrannical government in check, and it's there to protect our other natural rights. But the other Bill of Rights protect the Second Amendment as well. Uh, this protection is not a one-way street. The NRA itself uses its First Amendment right of free speech uses the First Amendment right of free speech and assembly to get our message across. I mean this is what the NRA's main power is. Many of politicians will ignore concerns from you or me if you know we singularly write them, but it's hard for them to ignore millions of people who are who have come together, such as uh, what's happened with the NRA. Now, the Fourth Amendment prevents uh, unlawful search and seizures. Uh, let's say I decide to go to a rifle class at a tactical response or Valor Ridge. This means my truck, I'm going to have either a couple ARs or AKs, you know, my main gun, and probably a backup gun in case one of them breaks down, um, a pistol and a backup pistol, 2,000, you know, at least 2,000 rifle rounds, 500 uh, pistol rounds, probably around 10 rifle magazines, 6 pistol magazines, plus a tactical vest and holsters. If I get pulled over by some sec anti Second Amendment uh, police officer, they may decide that hey, you know this guy's this guy's kind of fishy. He may be up to no good and uh, seize my seize my property. Well, here's where the Fourth, Fourth Amendment should protect that. So basically, uh, the NRA needs to realize that weakening the other Bill of Rights also weakens the Second. Again, I'm not asking for the NRA to become an advocacy group for other Bill of Amendment. Bill of Rights amendments, but they should be aware. They should be aware of policies and people they support who would weaken amendment and weaken these amendments and not support them. As in the case of the Attorney General, I would like to see the NRA push for Trey Gowdy. I mean, this guy is very well qualified for the job, and he's someone who would protect his oath. He protect his oath to protect the. Sorry, he is someone who would follow his oath to protect the Constitution and all of the Constitution. Uh, finally, we need to talk about how uh, sometimes it seems like the NRA is picking the easy fights and not trying to do some, do some permanent good now while the Republican Party has both houses, the presidency, and a conservative majority on the Supreme Court. And this might be our only two to four year window of having this um, for a very long time to come. It is time to go on offense and pressure those in power to overturn the Hughes Amendment and the NFA. But it seems like there's trouble even getting the Hearing Protection Act up for a vote. The NRA is acting like Alex Smith with check down passes when it's time to start acting like Aaron Rodgers and start slinging it. Instead of uh, trying to sell their insurance and kicking out their competitor at the NRA convention, um, that's actually a pretty weaselly thing to do there, NRA. Uh, the NRA needs to focus on the Hughes Amendment and the NFA using every last bit of political capital if they have to. Uh, my state organization, the Kansas State Rifle Association, went on the offense when conservatives won both houses in the governorship and did a great job in restoring our rights. I mean, Kansas is one of the best states in the Union for gun owners. Um, and much of this is thanks to the former president of the KSRA, uh, Patricia Stone King. I mean, if she wouldn't have had to step down for medical reasons, you know, I I would want her to replace Wayne LaPierre as president or vice president of the NRA. 
because we need her aggressiveness and tenacity on the national level. Um, I'm just going to kind of say if the NRA doesn't at least make an attempt to overturn either the Hughes or the NRA or the Hughes or the NFA, I'm not going to renew next year in 2018. If the NRA doesn't start to change when it comes to endorsing politicians and policies, I will not renew in 2018. Those of you who are watching her members who are members of the NRA and are pro Second Amendment, I suggest you contact Todd Rathner and let him know that there's a groundswell of members who aren't happy with the direction the NRA has gone. Uh, he will actually read your message and probably respond to you. And as I said before, he seems like a pretty stand up guy. So, you know, as long as you're polite about everything, I mean I'm sure he'll be polite to you. And if the and if the NRA has and if the NRA hasn't become an organization that fights for the enemies of freedom again, um, actually let your membership lapse. I mean, and you know, maybe you know, add that money to your state uh, rifle ex association. I mean, they're the ones who do the most fighting for you anyway. And because uh, losing money is probably the only way that will get the NRA's attention. I mean, I know they've lost tons of libertarian support over the last year. Now, if you're still with me, I'd like to thank you for uh, hearing me out and letting me get that off my chest. I'm doubtful this goes viral, but hopefully maybe somebody who uh, needs to see this sees this. I, th I thank you very much for watching, and as always, have a great day.